Hello and welcome to the channel and welcome to this army showcase of my Tyranids, my Hive Fleet Kaiju. Um, so some of you who have been following the channel for a while know that I've been having Tyranids. Uh, I started this army about a year ago um, and this is what I've got so far. So I'm sort of going to talk through what I've got and my thoughts uh, with the units and what I like, what I don't like. Things like that. Um, yeah, it's my High Fleet Kaiju. If you're wondering about the name, it's from a film which some of you may know, Pacific Rim. Um, the bugs in that... Bugs? Big alien monster things in that film were called the Kaiju. And they were sort of like a bluey colour. So, yes, High Fleet Kaiju. Um, so yeah, I'm going to have a quick talk about my army here uh, and sort of show you some close-ups, see if you want to have a quick look. Um, if those are on Instagram, if, if you check out Heretic Day 40k on Instagram, you'll see pictures that I put up quite often, and there's plenty of pictures of my Tyranids up there. But for those of you who don't have Instagram, I thought I'd do a quick video and show you YouTubers. Um, so yeah, I mean, before, before I get started, if you like the content, smash the like button. If you want to see more of my content, it's mainly battle reports. Um... But I might do a few of these for my armies um, and hit subscribe so you don't miss any content. Um, and if you really want to support me more, you can uh, check out Patreon. All the links for, and things will be down below. But uh, without further ado, let's get started. Um, so yeah, so, so High Fleet Kaiju. Um, I sort of mentioned the reason behind the name and, and the colour scheme. Um, the colour scheme is actually very, very simple. Uh, what I've essentially done with these little bugs... Uh, well, all the bugs even, even the big ones, is essentially exactly the same method. Um, and I first tried it out on a little termagant. Uh, and I thought, well, that looks all right. Let's see if it works on something bigger. And it did. So I just carried on doing it. Essentially, I spray them black. Um, and, and then the black sort of stays there. The carapace I do in, I think it's called Cantor Blue. It's like a dark blue colour. Um, and then all the sort of bony bits and the sives and things I do in bone. Um, and then the, the eyes and sort of tongues and things. Uh, I'm actually doing white initially for the base. Uh, and then once I've done that, um, I put a very dark red wash over the black flesh. Um, so it's got a slight red tinge to it. Um, all the little bit joints and things I actually do in leech purple. Uh, and I put that on before the wash, so sometimes the red sort of washes into the purple as well. Uh, for the carapace, I dry brush. Um, so it's, it's like a, a, a lightning, sort of really light blue, sort of dry brushed over, which sort of picks out all the edges. Let's see if I can find one that shows it a little bit better. There we go. Um, and then for the bony bits, I, I then put a wash of... I think it's catajam flesh. Essentially, it's a really dark brown wash that I put over the bone to muck it up a bit. And the green bits, which are based in white, I then go over with a wash of tesseract glow. Sort of make them pop. Um, so that's the colour scheme, essentially. Uh, if anyone was interested, I've had people ask before and comment asking about the scheme and, and saying it looks cool. So that, that's how I did it, essentially. Uh, but now on to the units and things. Uh, let's just start in the middle with this chap. Uh, this is my flying hive tyrant uh, with a dead dark angel on the base. Um, that's a common theme across most of my armies. Most of the dead space marines are dark angels. And that's mostly because I've got a mate I've known for years who plays dark angels. And I like killing dark angels. Sorry, dark angels fans. Um, <laughs> this is my flying hive tyrant. Uh, he's got a heavy venom cannon. Why did I give him a heavy venom cannon? I don't know. When I was building it, I just thought, what would be better than a massive gun on a guy that flies around? So I gave him that. Um, when I built him about a year ago, it wasn't amazing, but heavy venom cannons are pretty tasty now. Um, so having a guy that flies around with a big gun is quite good. And he's still not that bad in combat. And as well as that, he's also, also obviously synapse. Um, and he's a psyker and things like that. So he's sort of a mobile sort of gun platform which is nice around him I've got those little termagants termagants are cool I like termagants um, in terms of gameplay 
I just like having sort of cheap chaff swarms, to be honest. I think if you're going to play Tyranids, I, I like the swarm method. You have a swarm with some big monsters. Some people like running loads of big monsters. Some people like having um, lots of big solid units of warriors and things like that. I like having lots of chaff with some big monsters supporting them. That's how I like to play. Um, and Tumigans aren't that bad now. They've gone up in points a little bit, but they can actually put out a decent amount of firepower now with their flesh borers, which is nice. And also you can give them loads of buffs and things. Um, fun fact, <laughs> um, and a nice combo that you can actually do with Termigants. Um, if you use the Kronos High Fleet, which increases range and increases AP at half range, if you have some a big unit of Termigants, for example, there are some really cool buffs you can do with them. You can have... Uh, I know, let's say you give them direct guidance with wall of trait, so give them plus one hit. You then have a Swarm Lord, who we'll get to later, to make them re-roll all the hits. If you put the Psychic Power Symbio Storm on them to increase the strength of their guns as well, you can essentially have a massive brick of Termigants shooting accurately with lots of re-rolls. Um, and then if you use the Stratagem Scorch Bugs, you can increase their range further and up their strength even more. So you can essentially have lots of shots hitting at strength 7, minus 2 AP within 14 inches <laughs> for little bugs. Now, that would be hilarious, wouldn't it? Um, haven't tried that yet, but I'm pretty sure I will do it at some point to see if it actually does anything. Uh, but yeah, Termigants. I like Termigants. Lots of people like Warriors. I'm not really a fan of Warriors. Uh, warriors are really good. I just don't like the look of Warriors. Um, and, and I go for Rule of Cool with my stuff. I like Termigants. So I'm a Termigants. Uh, speaking of Swarmy the Swarm Lord, let's come over here to Swarmy the Swarm Lord. So he's a Swarm Lord. Swarm Lords are really cool. Um, not only do they look awesome with loads of massive swords, I really like their rules as well. Um, being able to give a whole unit rerolls is really good. And I think they're absolute tanks. If you put catalysts on these chaps, which is essentially a five up shrug, they can be really, really difficult to kill. Um, and they can put out a fair amount of damage as well. Um, not many competitive lists at the moment are running Swarm Lords. They're most, mostly running Flying Nodes do's. Um, but I think if you go in for more Swarms, I think the Swarm Lord could be really good. Um, and around him, I've got his Hormigants. I like Hormigants. Hormigants are quite good now. They're sort of like the new Gene Stealers because they're really quick and they can advance and charge with a stratagem. Um, sort of bringing them back a bit because they used to be a bit naff before Hormigants, but they're not that bad now. Uh, only minus one AP, but there are ways to improve that with certain high fleets and certain things. I think there is certainly room for Hormigants in a list as a very quick, um, sort of chaff cheap unit to trade on objectives because they're obsecs. And um, potentially good at clearing out chaff units as well because they have lots of attacks. So, yeah. Hormigants. Um, shuffling over to the other side here. Got gene stealers. I've got a brood lord now. Gene stealers. I've always loved gene stealers. I love gene stealers. I I remember playing Space Hulk back in the nineties. Gene stealers against Space Marine Terminators, and gene stealers were just cool. They're an iconic unit. Gene stealers. If you think Tyranids, you think gene stealers. Um, so I really like gene stealers. Um, they've changed a bit rules-wise in terms of the game. They, they can no longer advance and charge. Uh, but they are a bit better in combat. Uh, and they can now forward deploy, which means you can... Instead of just having them as like a an aggressive throw-at-the-table unit, you can be sneaky. Sneaky with gene stealers. And that's just cool, right? What's not better than like 20... Well, I can't have units of 20 anymore. What's better than 10 gene stealers? Starting the game, hiding behind a room, ready to pounce out onto something. That's just cool. All right? Well, at least I think so, anyway. Uh, and with them is obviously their sort of big daddy gene stealer, the Brood Lord, who's very brooding. And he's the Lord of Gene Stealers. Um, he is what he is. He, he can help Gene Stealers out a bit. He's not bad. Um, Brood Lords at the moment, they're in a bit of an odd place. Um, he's more points than a Neurothrope, and if you want a Psyker, Neurothrope's are better. Um, if you want something combat related, you can get a Carnifex for like 20, 30 points more, which is a lot better. Um, so they're a bit of an odd spot, Broodlords, but I, I still like them. I think there's definitely, um, options you can do with them. I still like them. I like running them in my lists, but that's mainly because I just like Gene Sears and Broodlords, and I think they're cool. 
Um, yeah, that's most of my chaff talked about. Um, let's go over here to this new chap, the Parasite of Mortrex. So, um, the story about this guy is, um, for those of you who watch my bat reports, you will probably know someone called Death Guard Andy. Um, and he got this guy for me, because I, I basically drove him to a tournament recently. Um, and instead of petrol money, he bought me a Parasite of Mortrex, which is very nice of him. Um, and I'm going to use him to destroy him at some point. Uh, <laughs> put a little ripper on his base because he's got a rule where he can infect things and ripper swarms could potentially pop out. So, um, yeah, that's him. He's quite cool. I think, sort of competitively speaking, this guy's not bad. He's only 80 points. He's sign ups. He's quick. You can give him a wall trait where he's obsec and counts as five. So you can sort of jump him around, nick objectives. I think there's a stratagem where as you fly over things, he sort of infects things as he flies over them, which is just cool. Um, he's also minus one hit, so we could be, be a bit of a nuisance unit for 80 points. So, yeah, I'm going to try him out soon and see how he does. Uh, I've just put, got some river swarms around him because, yeah, river swarms. Um, okay, now while I'm over here, I've got some hive guard. Now, hive guard, as most pe people know, used to be amazing. Uh, but but no, not not so much. So I haven't actually used these guys with the new codex yet because, quite frankly, I think they're far too overcosted for what they do. Um, they can't be buffed in any way, shape, or form, um, except for maybe use for stratagems and things. I think if you give them toxin sacks and there's a stratagem, you can use to make them also wound on hits or sixes with their guns. Um, but the range has been shortened, so the only way you're really going to make use of them is with Chronos to get the extra range. Again. They're AP2, um, but if you're shooting indirectly, you're effectively AP1. Um, and the guns are damaged too now, so they're basically anti-marine killers, but marines have armor of contempt. So if you're shooting indirect at marines, they're AP dash. Um, so, yeah. yeah. Um, essentially, you need them to be chronos to get the extra AP at half range as well, really, to make them worthwhile. And even then, I think they're far too overcosted. But they get more shots now, and they, they can't be affected by hit modifiers. So, if it's Harlequins, maybe they're good. Because they'd wound the little space pixies on twos, and they'll always set them on threes. Hmm, interesting. Uh, but yeah, I've got... Um, and, and again, you'll notice a Dark Angel on the base. Um, cool. I've got... Uh, right. Now, this chap. Who is he? Oh, he's Trigon Prime. He, he normally tries, and then he's gone. So he's a bit of a glass cannon, the Trigon Prime, but I really like him. I always try and see if I can find a way to fit him in a list. Um, and that's for two reasons. One, I think he looks cool. Um, and two, having something that can pop up and potentially be a bit of a distraction or disrupt your opponent's plan um, it is always good. For, for that, he's quite expensive at 200 points, but he's also, if you get him into combat on that charge, he can blend infantry. So many attacks at damage too. Um, and, and if you give him the uh, the passenger relic to give him plus two to advance and charge, he's, he's only got a seven inch charge when he pops up. Um, so he's got a really good chance of getting in and then, you know, you can just wreck, wreck infantry, um, which is nice. He's also minus one to hit in combat. Um, so if you tie something up in combat, that's normally a decent combat unit. You, you can think, yeah, you know what? You might survive. Uh, but he's a bit of a glass cannon. Um, obviously with brain bugs you can give them an invulnerable save for a turn um, which is really the, the, the way to do it is you activate that the turn he's going to pop up uh, or maybe the turn after depending if you went first or second um, but what I like to do as well is give him the wall trait to give him reroll hits because he's got 12 attacks um, so if you're rerolling those hits that's really good with that number of attacks and also if he gets bracketed and you're rerolling all the all, all his hits it doesn't really matter if you get bracketed because his weapon skill changes, but his attacks stay the same, his strength stays the same. So the reroll's really good at keeping these guys going for longer. Um, so yeah, that's, that's my Trigon. Um, either side, I've got some card effects. Uh, let's start with the Crushing Claws guy. Um, so he's got Crushing Claws. He's, he's my smash effects, that's what I've called him. Um, I could use him as old one-eye, but I just use him as card effects because card effects is really, really good now. I think there's definitely room to maybe have Carnifex tournament lists, which is loads of Carnifexes and like half turrets and swarm walls to buff them. Um, Crushing Claws are really good at D3 plus 3 damage. <laughs> uh, 
um, at like strength 11, and if you give them fawns at like AP4, it's just, yeah. And because Carnifex is a core, you can buff them with things. I really like Carnifexes. Uh, I normally like giving this chap Dermic Symbiosis for an invulnerable save, because he normally just runs off and does his own thing. So giving him, him a built-in invul is, is useful. Uh, meanwhile, for my shoot effects, as, as I call them, I've given them a Venom Cannon, um, because Venom Cannons are really good, uh, as mentioned earlier with the Hive Tyrant. Uh, I've been a Venom Cannon that, again, is on a core model that you can, you know, um, give buffs to to re-rolls or pluses to hit without Venom Cannons. Really nice. Uh, and obviously on card effects, which are minus, minus one damage and have a two-up save, it's a half decent gun platform, uh, which can also run forward and smash things when it gets near. Um, also, give them one of these chaps of ferocious ammunition, so you do mortal wounds after you've shot them. It's just 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 for extra lols. Um, <laughs> a GT recently, actually, this chap here, I, I played against Tyranids in one game, and this chap here basically one-shotted an Exocrine that was on four wounds, and the Exocrine had Demic Symbiosis as well. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. Basically, all three shots hit, wounded. He failed all, all three invulnerable saves, um, which would then be four, eight, twelve wounds. So the Exocrine had three wounds left because they got fifteen wounds. And then Verocious Ammunition kicked in and took an extra three mortal wounds off of it. It was just hilarious. <laughs> One shot in a million, but it, oh, it was great. Um, speaking of Venom Cannons, actually, what I normally do with my Hive Tyrant is um, give him... Because there are two things you can do with Venom Cannon Hive Tyrants. You can give them Shard Gullet, the Relic Venom Cannon, which is strength 12, minus 5, 5 damage, which is really good and really strong, but obviously... You know, strength 12, it's it's only going to help against certain targets. The minus 5 AP, you're just going to be bumping into invulnerable saves before then anyway. Um, so it's only the extra damage which you're getting out of it, really. Um, because the normal Venom can, can strength 9, minus 3, 4 damage. So the extra AP doesn't make a massive difference. The damage is 1 extra, and the strength doesn't make a massive difference against most targets either. Unless you're shooting strength that's like toughness 5 or toughness 6. Um... Which is a bit of a niche in itself, to be honest. Um, so what I normally do with this chap is I give him Pathogenesis as the Relic. Uh, which gives him an extra 8-inch range on that gun. So it's now going to be a really long range to Venom Cannon on someone that can move really quickly. So basically, you can jump around, see something, shoot it. Um, and it also allows him to re-roll a hit and a wound. So essentially, you've got three shots hitting on twos with a re-roll. Wounding most things on threes with a re-roll. Um... So it just makes it really efficient, I found, and it seems to work quite well. Um, but anyway, okay, coming across over here to Exocrines. I mentioned Exocrines. Exocrines are really good. 15 wounds, toughness 8, 2 up save. It's an absolute tank. You can sit these chaps at the back and they will just they can essentially shoot AP4 fun hammers all day long, which is uh, really good. Strength 8, minus 4 AP, 3 damage, and between 7 and 9 shots. It's really good. If you're up against Gravis or Blade Guard or Terminators or, or even Vehicles, because of the volume of shots, it can just rip through them. Um, and if you're against someone who's got lots of chaff, you don't mind shooting chaff with it because it's still got a fair volume of fire. It's not as though you're wasting like a rupture cannon on Gene Sealers. Um, so it's not bad. And, and the fact that these guys, if, if you use the strat or, or you move them under half their movement, they ignore all benefits of cover. So that's light cover and dense cover. It's really, really good. Got marines behind trees in a ruin in your own X-Crin. You just don't care. Um, so they're really good. I like x -crins. I like two x -crins, even better. Um, over here, uh, Neurofrope, the king brain bug with their luminous green brains. Now, Neurofropes are, without a doubt, the best unit in the Tyranic Codex. I'm going to explain to you why. They get plus one to cast, which is really good. Uh, they have an ability, which means they can point at a at a Psyche unit, uh, which can be themselves, and they cast on 3d6, and you pick which two you want. Um, so that's really good in itself. Uh, combine that with the um, Tyranid Psychic Powers, which most of them can be pinged up the table using Synaptic Link between all your sign-ups creatures. Um, and you can normally cast pretty much anything you want without it being denied. Um, and it's almost guaranteed, but what you can do is you can give him a resonance barb as, a, as the relic, which then lets him get an extra plus one to cast, and he knows an additional power. So he's, he's then getting plus two to cast on a 3d6 pick two, whichever you want, you know, cast roll. 
and he knows an extra power. So you just give this chap all the powers that you want to go off or need to go off. So you give him catalyst for your shrugs. You give him onslaught for your advanced charge unit. You give it paroxysm um, so you can make an enemy unit minus one to wound you in combat or not fire overwatch. And then obviously you give him smite uh, and then obviously your high fleet power. And for a CP, you can cast an extra power. So you can essentially have three of your most important powers guaranteed for a turn. It's a beautiful thing. Uh, and then when the enemy start getting close to him, you've got a 3d6 plus 2 to cast smite. <laughs> Super smites are definitely a thing. Uh, and not only that, if you use Zermanthropes, if Zermanthropes nearby him are wounded and the enemy start taking mortal wounds nearby, he can heal the Zermanthropes. It's just brilliant. 100 points, absolute bargain. Pretty sure his points are going to go up soon, but he's amazing. Now, Zone Fruits got six of them uh, because units of six used to be a thing. Uh, and they still are a thing. If you want to pretty much guarantee Super Smites for pretty much the entire game and have like a really difficult to kill unit just floating around. Um, but to be honest, they can only cast one power now. So you're better, effort, better off having two small units. Um, maybe four, um, but, but three is good as well. Um, because they get plus one to cast for Switch Smites and Witch Fires for each mod in the unit. Yeah, so obviously the bigger unit, more chances of getting Super Smites. So that's really good. Uh, and then for Smites, they get an extra Mortal Wound for each mod in the unit, up to a maximum of three. So units of three are really good for that reason, if you want efficiency. But to have the efficiency for a bit longer, having four is really nice. Because obviously the average roll... On 2d6 is a 7. So if you've got a unit of 4, you're adding 4 to that cast. On average, you should get a super smite every turn. And then get plus 3 to it. So units of 4 may be a thing. But units of 3 are a thing as well. Um, so yeah, zone probes. They're cool. Um, and obviously they've got their warp shielding imperative, which is nice. Once per battle, um, all the synapse creatures in your army can activate invulnerable saves for things nearby. If you've got zone probes in your army... So that's really cool. Um, oh, who's that in the back there? Are there some lictors hiding? Oh, of course there is, because they're lictors. Uh, yeah, I've got a couple of lictors. Um, they're okay. They, they've, they've increased stat-wise in the new codex. They're a little bit more killy. They're a little bit more tough. I don't know if they still have a place or not, um, other than sort of being a nuisance unit. But what has definitely got a place is the, the character lictor. Death Leaper. He's he's hilarious. He's got a four plus involved, he's minus one hit. You can't use stratagems on units that are in engagement range of him. And his wall trait makes him obsec. And he can't be they can't be targeted if they're in cover more than 12 inches away. So Death Leaper can just hide all game and jump out, leap on objective, murder some infantry, and just go, ha ha! My objective, now try and kill me. Um, so yeah. Um, I think I've talked about most of the units and sort of what I'd like to do with them in terms of buffs and combos and things a little bit about the rules talk about the painting what do I like the most for Tyranids rules wise Neurofrope best unit in the codex I also really really like Swarm Lord which is controversial in itself but I just think they're a tank toughness 8, 13 wounds, 2 up save ignore the first damage in combat give, give Catalyst on him and he's just hilarious and then if you charge them into a really good combat unit, just stick Paroxysm on the enemy combat unit and just watch them fail miserably at trying to damage the small mob. Um, you can take a lot of punishment before he goes down. I think that's fair to say. Um, at tournaments, he's done really well at just not only killing things, but just absorbing a lot of punishment. Um, and being able to give a core unit full rerolls is also really, really good. And also being able to give core units obsec can be very handy as well. You know, you like making genius fillers obsec or zone probes or carnifexes. Um, it's really, really good. Or making obsec units double obsec <laughs> is also quite useful. Um, so, yeah. Um, I hope Hive Guards go down in points so they can actually have a use again or at least give them the core keyword so they're actually worth the points then. Um, but, yeah, this is my High Fleet Kaiju. Thank you for watching. Um, if you have anything to say or ask or anything at all about Tyranids, feel free to leave comments below. I, I will answer. If you've got questions about rules or 
you know, tips or tricks or paint scheme things or anything else tuna related, then uh, feel free to ask. Um, but yes, it's my tyranids. Thanks for watching, everyone, and I'll see you in the next one.